What's up, y'all? Welcome to my channel, Geechee Hood Activists. And today's Hood Activist topic is about endangered cultures. And the first culture we about to touch on is the Sentinelese people. Now, I'm not sure what these people actually go by, but because um, Sentinelese is something that the colonizers gave them. You know, I'm pretty sure they call themselves something else, but for right now, I'm gonna just call them Sentinelese because that's all I know. So they've been forced into the spotlight ever since they had Merrick John Chow. Now, mind you, everybody knows that this island is off limits because number one, anybody that come onto their island, you get Merrick. You know, they don't like outsiders and they have good reasons to not like outsiders, right? Because like with any, you know, endangered culture outsiders bring drugs they bring alcohol they bring violence they um kidnap your people and take your land you know just like with the native americans a lot of just like with a lot of cultures that's not endangered you know I and mean, they probably wouldn't be endangered if they didn't let outsiders come in you know but but you know a lot of that isn't their fault because you know sometimes outsiders force their way in this time someone contacted them an outsider contacted him was in the 1800s, right? His name was Maurice Portman, I believe. Yeah, Maurice Portman. And what did he do? He ended up he ended up kidnapping a bunch of the people, right? He kidnapped a bunch of the people, did a whole bunch of experiments. Um, and of course, you know, a lot of people started dying. Like all the adults started dying and the churn ended up getting sick. So he took the churn back to the island. Now Ain't no telling if these sick churn done expose the rest of the islanders to um to the same diseases they had. But what we do know is their population has decreased since then. You know, and this was all the way in the eighteen hundreds. Now mind you, people have been in contact with them since then and you know, sometimes friendly occasions, but for the most part they they know about outsiders, right? They know outsiders don't mean any good. They bring drugs, they bring violence, they bring harm, you know? Um, and they know firsthand because they neighbors, the Jahara or Jara people um, that that basically live like next door to the Sentinel people. Um, they're, they're more friendly, you know? So they had invited a lot of outsiders into their land and y'all can look it up, but the Jahara people going through it, like since they let them colonizers in. You know, like, like how I said, outsiders, they forcing them to drink alcohol, they bring in drugs, and they raping their women. Big way. Big up. 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 So with that in mind, like, the Sentinel people ain't dumb. Like, they know what happens when you bring outsiders in you know so they're like anti any any kind of outsider if you ain't with the gang they don't want you messing with them and then also like john child then he didn't have any good intentions like he just assumed that that the sentinel people were godless because that's what missionaries and colonizers believe they believe native people are godless savages so rightfully they defended their territory and they marked him on site now do i feel bad for him no i do not i do i really i just hope that that the Sentinel people are able are able to recover and they and I hope they don't get sick. But they wanted um first groups to migrate over to India, you know? So yes, the first Indians were black. Um so they they have they don't have any immunity to all these diseases we got now. Like right now I'm getting over a cold, so if I was to even go over there, I can expose I can expose them to um a common cold and wipe out their whole entire tribe, like everybody over there. So with that being said, now we done discussed our HUD activist topic. This is our HUD activist challenge. I challenge y'all to support, defend, and, you know, protect Native people, Indigenous cultures that's in y'all city or in y'all state. You know, if you don't know any, you can look it up. Like, Native Americans are still out here. They still going through it. And we even have, you know, Black nations and cultures who need protection. Like, I'm Geechee. I'm Gullah Geechee. And where I'm at, you know, where I'm at, gentrification is a huge issue. A lot of us getting kicked off of our land, people that do have land, a lot of us being evicted, a lot of us are, you know, forced assimilation is really hurting our culture right now. So where a lot of um, a lot of young people like my generation, we don't even know um, the Gullah language. Most of us, we only speak Geechee, you know? Which is a part of, um, of Gullah, of the Gullah language, but Geechee is more, has more English words in it because, you know, 
where we done assimilate. We done assimilate. And it's hard to really find a lot of people my age who even speak Gullah. Like most of, most of Gullah Geechee, most of the young population that's Gullah Geechee, we only speak Geechee. Um, so that's just, you know, so that just shows you, you know, how our culture is changing, how our culture is changing. And even now, you know, we have some of the kids, they make um, palmetto roses, which, you know, I call them Geechee flowers. I call them... Uh, I call them Geechee flowers. They look like this. If you come to Charleston, you know, you'll probably see this on a car or you'll probably see see some in a little churn making that. But, um, yeah, even the kids that make that for a living, you know, that's a part of the culture. They getting kicked off of out the street, you know. I'm doing my part by focusing on that because I feel like, you know, kind of like my duty since I am Gullah Geechee to um, promote, preserve, and protect my own culture. But if y'all don't have any that y'all know of nearby, please just look it up and protect and promote and preserve endangered cultures. And but that's it for today. Like, share, comment, subscribe. I'll hit y'all boy back with the next HUD activist topic and challenge.